Mike Tyson is considered one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. Born in Brooklyn, Tyson's skill in the ring was recognized at a young age while attending a reform school in upstate New York. He would then be adopted by legendary trainer Cus D'Amato, and in 1986, Tyson became the youngest heavyweight champion in history at only 20 years old. Along with him on that journey was award-winning photographer Lori Grinker, who took all the photos you see here, and she now has a new book out. Lori joins me now live over Zoom. Good morning, Lori, and thank you for being here. Good morning, Cindy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, how did you meet Mike Tyson? Well, I was a student at Parsons School of Design. Mm -hmm. Thinking I was going to be an illustrator, I was in communication design, and I took a photojournalism class. And the assignment for the semester was to find a story and try to get it published. And I learned about these kids upstate being trained with Customato, asked if I could go up found this, this uh, nine-year-old named Billy Ham who had muscles and started photographing him, but of course he was part of the group, and Mike was part of that group at age 14, and I did publish the work in Inside Sports, wow. and was photographing Mike at the same time. So you were photographing him at such a young age, 14. What were your first impressions of him? He was shy, mm. he was polite, he was serious about learning. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a young guy hanging out with a group of boys and sometimes they were rambunctious, they laughed a lot. So it, it was um, a mix of him being earnest and also having, you know, being a young guy. Yeah, and looking at your book, I, I noticed that you, you were saying that he was reading up on books about boxing and watching video all the time, so he re really was studying up on the sport. What insights did you have about your experience with him when looking at all the photos and putting this book together? Well, it, it's, it's amazing to me that I have all this because I was doing it as it was happening. It wasn't like a pre-thought thing because, of course, I didn't know exactly what was going to happen. But Looking at it, I see this breadth of time about this particular history of boxing. The, the 80s, of course, the story of Mike's rise and fall, this big kid with a good soul who did a lot of bad things, but with the help of people who really cared for him, he, and a lot of hard work and dedication, he turned his life around. And then on his way up, he opened his heart to so many people, and some of those people were clearly just out for themselves. Mm. How did he feel about being photographed? He hated it at first. Mm. Um, I remember I sort of had to tiptoe around a little bit in the, you know, when I started going up there and being in the house and knowing where. I, when I could photograph, when I couldn't, but Cus was so welcoming that he got used to me. Uh, he got annoyed sometimes. I was around a lot. And at Cus's funeral, he, he did not want to be photographed. And Jim Jacobs, the co-manager, said, explain that this is part of this documentation. And oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, just dropped my earbud. <laughs> um, and he let me photograph and you know so he got used to it and eventually I think he got to like it. So what was it like I, I understand on the weekends that you lived with the boxers that Customato trained so that included Mike Tyson what was that like? There were a few boxers that lived there all the time a few kids and a few that came up just on weekends like Billy Ham the one I was photographing and it was fascinating you know it was boxing all the time, cussing his bathrobe, teaching his peekaboo style in the living room at night while the guys were watching TV on in this big living room, this little black and white TV. Um, they had their chores. They, you know, Camille ran the house. I was learning about journalism. I, it was just, you know, overall, a great way to start as a journal, an accidental journalist, actually. And how did you narrow down the choices you made for the book? Because you shot, you were a photographer with them for years. It's very funny because the designer Giorgio Baravale and Jeffrey Smith, my editorial agent, and I were working on this together, and we went over about 100 pages, so we had to scale it back quite a bit, but. The idea was not to make it chronological necessarily, but to put it 
in periods and particular situations. So, of course, it starts when he's young, up at the house with Cuss and the kids and going to boxing clubs, and then it gets into his pigeon. There's a section on pigeons, then him turning pro, and there's training, then becoming the world champion. Then, of course, Robin comes into it, so there's parts with Robin Givens and him. And and then as he starts to go downhill, mm. you know, and it ends with him losing the title. It yeah. actually ends with him being on Broadway. So I think it brings him full circle. Well, Lori Grinker, thank you so much for being here and all your insight. Thank you. Um, there's a book signing Friday night at Gleason's Gym. And so some... is, that, is it Friday or Saturday? Saturday, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Saturday, <laughs> October 15th. And I have too much going on. Saturday, October 15th. And November 3rd, a great photo exhibition at Clamp Art Gallery in New York City. Right. And, you know, just again to say, you know, you're going to be at Gleason's Gym and then at Clamp Art Gallery, which is on 29th Street in Manhattan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.